Today we are going to be putting our watercolor techniques to the test. We are going to create this picture together as a practice before our final watercolor painting that you'll do next week. So take a square sheet of watercolor paper and I want you to tape it down onto your dining room table, your kitchen counter, or some type of board that you have at your home. Then with your 2H pencil, draw a rectangle on the left-hand side of your square. Make sure you leave space for an additional rectangle on the right because we're going to be putting another watercolor landscape on that side. And then draw a line about a third of the way up. That's going to be our ground plane. For those of you at home, pause the video as this is going on so you can pace yourself and follow all the directions accurately. Whenever you begin your landscape, analyze your colors, asking yourself, do I see secondary, primary, or tertiary colors? That will help remind you maybe what colors you might have to blend together to create them. So the first color we're going to mix is this peachy orange. I'm using that Indian yellow. I'm gonna be adding in a little touch of the red. Notice though how I'm cleaning off my brush before I put it in a new color um, little palette. The reason for that is I don't want my colors in the little circular palettes to get mucked up and dirty. Now this orange that I'm mixing right now, this peachy, is a little too dark. So I'm using the yellow to lighten it up, but I'm also gonna be adding water to that color splotch to help dilute the intensity and brightness of the hue that I am mixing. So take a second and add in the colors that you see me adding in. You might also recognize that I'm taking the colors that I'm mixing and placing a little like a mark above where I'm making my landscape. That's me checking back to my reference photo to see is this color matching what I'm seeing in the picture. And once I find that it is, then I can move on and start blending in my second color. The second color is that reddish purple that we're seeing next to the peach. That is a tertiary color. So I can mix that by combining red and blue together or red and purple together. Because the purple is so vibrant, I'm going to be using that purple color circle palette that I have there and um, seeing how well that creates that color. I just noticed that it was maybe a little bit too purple, so I'm going back in with a little bit more red just to make it a little warmer and less cool. And then I'm always going back and making little color samples on the border of my landscape to see how well that color is matching the one within the reference photo. The third color we're going to mix is going to be that darkish purple or bluish purple right above that like cloudy mist that goes through the middle of the sky. So I'm taking some purple, cleaning off my brush, and I'm dipping it into, I believe, the ultramarine blue um, circle there just to get it really nice and dark. And um, once I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to start moving on to my next darkest color. But it's very important to make sure all of your colors are accurate and that you have a lot of pigment for each color because we know that water evaporates as um, it sits out. So you want to make sure that you're mixing enough of that color so when you go to actually paint the watercolor, you have all of the pigment that you need. For this last color that I'm mixing, it's extremely dark. So I'm trying to concentrate on using colors from my palettes that have a darker value already. I'm wanting to avoid adding in a lot of black because black tends to mute and dilute and kind of make a color look muddy, but I'm just not able to achieve the dark value without it. So I am going to go in with a few touches of black in this one just to increase the value of that color so I'm getting that full range of values that I'm seeing in my composition. Whenever you begin painting your landscape, always think about what is going to be the best technique for what I'm seeing. I think for me, the best technique for this work is to do a gradated wash on a wet background. So I'm using my larger sable brush and I'm creating a nice even wet fill in my rectangle. I'm only putting it in the top portion 
of my rectangle. So I'm painting that water all the way down to that horizontal line that you placed in a third of the way up. Make sure your water is clean and not pigmented. I'm going to begin by placing in the peach color. I wanna have the pigment be kind of heavy. Make sure there's not a lot of water on your brush when you do this. And after I paint in the one stroke, I'm going to drag that color out to the left and to the right to help fade it. I'm gonna repeat that same step with this purpley red or reddish purple. I put that strip in boldly and I'm dragging it down to help blend with the peach. So that's that variegated wash that we learned the other day. I'm gonna do this to the other side just a little bit, but I'm going to have it transition into that darker bluish purple next. I ended up going in with a little bit of purple. That was just too much, um, but I, I do end up kind of honing that down. So feel free to do that if you want. I wanted to put that bold purple in just because I felt like I was missing that within my mixed colors. So now I'm putting in the more bluish purple. Notice how I'm placing it in boldly and I'm not going in with too many extra strokes than I need to. I'm also looking at the movement of my sky. It's kind of on an angle. So all of my strokes are on an angle to mimic that. Now, after I've placed in this rough gradated or variegated gradated wash, I'm going to then start doing that double layer of variegation where I'm going in with other colors and I'm laying them on top of other areas. You'll notice that there's a little bit of blue that kind of seeps through underneath that whitish Milky Way section. So I'm just going to be dabbing in the color in the areas that I'm seeing it. If you tend to place in too much of a color in a certain area, you can always use that lift off technique where you clean off the brush and place the brush on the area where you need to remove pigment and then you can remove color in that area really easily. As you paint, you not only have to pay attention to the color placement, but also the value placement. If your values are off in your sky, it's not going to look three-dimensional. So I ended up going straight in with some dark blue and then some dark blue mixed with a little bit more black to help decrease the values in my sky to make it look really nice and dark because this is supposed to be happening at night and I really wanted to show that time of the day and I wasn't getting it before I had these darker values. I am going to soften these darker marks by putting in a little bit more of those darker values that I had mixed from my color palette. But notice that I'm just kind of tapping in the colors. I'm not overworking the area and I'm letting the watercolors fade into one another. This is the hard part with watercolor. You have to show a lot of restraint and trust that the watercolors will blend into one another the way you want them to look. And that is hard to do to get that patience. So I am kind of still playing around with the color placement, putting in some more purples, some more pinks, just to pull out some more of those intense colors that I'm seeing. Um, but once again, I'm analyzing where those colors are going and I'm placing them in intentionally. So you can start to see where I'm seeing the purple from the picture on the left-hand side. And I'm looking for all of those purpley spots as I go. In areas where they should be a lighter purple, I need to be adding more water um, to the color to kind of dilute it or adding more pigment in to make colors darker. I felt like that peach wasn't quite dark enough, so that's why I added that in on the bottom left hand corner. Next, we're going to use the lift off technique to help pull out those lighter values where our Milky Way is. So, to do this technique, you need to have a damp brush where most of the water has been removed on a paper towel. So, notice I'm cleaning off the brush removing the water and then sticking that brush on the canvas. We're picking up the pigment in the area where the brush is going. You'll notice the brush will only absorb so much pigment. So after it absorbs what it can, then lift up the brush from the paper, clean it off, and then wipe off the extra water again on the paper towel. The more you lift off in an area, the wider it's going to become. So really analyze this reference photo whenever you're doing this step. Look to see where the lighter value whites are so you know how to lift off the pressure or of how, where to lift off the paint with your brush in the most accurate areas. 
Remember, we always want to draw or paint what we see, not what we think we see. So if you want this painting to look very accurate, you go, you're going to need to have that reference photo handy while you're completing the entire work. Be cautious not to lift off too much in a certain area or else you're going to be lifting up the fibers of the watercolor paper, which we don't want to do because then you could get a hole in your painting. But after you feel like you've lifted off the paint to a sufficient amount, then I want you to stop and let the color dry. We're going to be adding in the stars and this black foreground tomorrow. So today, the only thing I want you to do for the first half of your assignment is what we're seeing here. Once you finish your constellation sky, we're going to begin learning how to paint a different type of sky. And that's going to be one with a sunset with many different smooth transitions of color. So this is going to be the next one we're going to be creating today as well. So let's begin. Draw a second rectangle on the right hand side of your watercolor paper and then draw in that bottom ground plane, making it flat on the left and then kind of drawing it at that angle as it goes up to the right to show the hill. If you're like me and I forgot to clean off the lid to my watercolor palette, please wipe that off before you begin so we have it nice and clean to be mixing our new colors for this beautiful sunset sky. The great thing about finding a sunset picture like this where all of the colors are very vibrant is that you're not going to be blending a lot of colors together. Because they are so intense, you're going to be using colors straight from the palette. But I am going in and trying to mix that very nice pink, magenta, reddish color at the very top of the landscape, as well as that deeper red in the upper right hand corners. So to get that deeper red, I'm using the very deep crimson red. I'm gonna add a little bit of the blue to create a more purpley maroon red. And I might have added a touch of purple in there um, just to make it look a little bit warmer, but kind of experiment around as well. I'm sorry that you can't really see the rest of my palette in there. Um, but you know, use your knowledge of mixing colors on your color wheel to help create the colors that you're seeing in this particular landscape sky. So this final color that I'm mixing is that darkest hue that you're seeing right there in the edges of the corners. Because these hues are so dark, I'm trying to be very cautious not to dilute the pigment with too much water. So I'm using minimal water and more pigment. So when I place it into my wet background, the pigment's not going to turn into a lighter value. To help these colors transition into one another really well, we're going to apply the colors onto a wet background. So using your number 10 brush, I want you to paint in clean water onto your background. Try to avoid having anything be dirty. My brush there got a little dirty. I, was, I didn't quite clean it all the way, so I got a tint of um, like a pinkish red in there, but try to keep this as white as possible. So make sure your brush is clean before you do this, that you have clean water and create a really nice, even wet fill. We don't want a puddle, but we don't want too little water to where the colors won't actually seep out and blend into one another. And here's the fun part. We get to go straight in with this yellow right off the palette. Put it in boldly. Don't dilute it too much with water because we want it to be super intense. And paint it in the shape that you're seeing. So I'm using these circular motions because it looks like the sun. The next color I'm adding in is going to be that nice vibrant orange. I'm going to place it a little bit next to the yellow. I don't want them to completely touch at first because I want it to be a nice soft transition. And you can see that by having that water down there, that orange is already dispersing out into the area above it. To help the orange and yellow mix together, I am going to clean off my brush and just kind of blend it in between where the orange and yellow meet so they can that those two colors can blend a little bit better together. Then I'm going in with this nice deep red and I'm just putting it in as a strip and I'm letting the colors do the magic. I'm not worried about going back in and overworking an area. I'm just painting that in and letting the watercolors blend on their own. 
I did soften the red by adding a few touches of orange above and below it, and that helped kind of fade it out into the other colors that we're seeing. I want to move swiftly before the water dries and I don't get any more smooth transitions. So I'm working quite fast. I'm putting in that nice pink color next in areas where I feel like the water is starting to dry up. I'm cleaning off my brush and just putting in a little bit more clear water in between two colors to help them blend with one another again. This last part is super fun because we're starting to put in those nice, bright, dark, bold colors. So this is where it gets very important that you want to make sure that the value of the colors that you're placing in is accurate. If the values of your colors are off, then your whole entire landscape is going to look awkward. So make sure that the colors you're placing in are dark enough. And if they aren't dark enough, then quickly remix it on your palette and paint it in before your watercolor dries. This is the final step for this watercolor painting today. So I'm just gonna let the watercolor sit and blend into one another smoothly. And then tomorrow we're going to, like I said before, put in the stars on our constellation landscape on the left. And then we will place in our silhouette foregrounds in both of these paintings to finish off this work. Good luck and have a ton of fun 